Hola. That's Spanish for, you can have anything in my fridge, except my chorizos. If you're watching this, it means you're probably as passionate about languages as I am about chorizos. Hi, I'm Miscommunication. Today's lesson will demonstrate what can happen when a person uses the wrong word while trying to make friends in a foreign country. So let's travel to Argentina. Meet Carlos. He's from Mexico, but is on vacation in Argentina. Carlos wants to make friends with the locals. Hola, mi nombre es Carlos. Me encanta tu cachucha. You may be wondering why the Argentine couple looked so offended when Carlos complimented this woman's hat. In Mexico, the word cachucha means cap. But in Argentina, the word cachucha refers to the female anatomy. Let's see how the situation unfolds. Perdón. Me encanta la cachucha de su esposa. La he estado observando desde mi mesa y me he dado cuenta que he visto muchísimas cachuchas así aquí en Argentina. Está de moda este estilo de cachuchas, ¿verdad? Mi esposa tiene una cachucha muy parecida. Hace muchísimo tiempo la tiene y está media gastada. Me gustaría que usara una más moderna como la suya. ¿Pero qué te pasa, pedazo de Ahí viene mi esposa, María. Carlos, ¿estás hablando sobre mi cachucha otra vez? Siempre que lo dejo solo con otra gente, le empieza a contar a todo el mundo sobre mi cachucha y su disgusto. Esta cachucha es muy importante para mí, la tengo desde que era chiquita. Y ha pasado varias generaciones de mujeres de mi familia. Primero la tenía mi abuelita, y de ahí mi abuelita se la dio a mi madre, y mi madre me dio a mí la cachucha. Tantas memorias. Ay, pero qué preciosa su cachuchita. Te dije, ¿les molestaría si les ofrezco 20 dólares por la cachucha de su esposa? ¡Te voy a matar, forro! See how much can go wrong when misusing just one single word? Carlos and his wife could have had a lovely evening with their new friends. But now, it's all ruined. Let's give Carlos a chance to make it all better, now that he knows what cachucha means in Argentina. Hola, mi nombre es Carlos. Me encanta tu gorra. No estoy hablando sobre su cachucha, aunque estoy seguro es muy bonita. Yo tengo una gorra igual a la suya. Excepto la suya es mucho más moderna y no tan gastada como la mía. Aunque no se preocupe, no estoy hablando de su cachucha, aunque estoy segura que su cachucha es espléndida igual a la mía. Todas las cachuchas son perfectas en su propia manera. Everyone is feliz now. Languages are complex. Getting a single word wrong can truly ruin your day. Now I'm going to put on my furry cachucha and take a tango lesson. Until next time, adios. Bonjour. That's French for... I'm very excited to be here. This is the best day of my life. I'm Miscommunication. If you're watching this, it means you're as passionate about languages as I am about letting baguettes harden so I can use them as hammers. Today's lesson will demonstrate how much a mistranslation can ruin your dating life. Let's travel to Paris. Meet Joel. He is American, but has been living in Paris for a few months. He has a huge crush on Florent, a French guy he met through a mutual friend. They are on their first date. Let's see how the situation unfolds. Hmm. 
Marguerite m'a beaucoup parlé de toi. C'est vrai. Oui, je sais que t'as étudié les maths, t'aimes les chiens, et que tu fais un caca nerveux à chaque fois que tu le sors avec quelqu'un, il commence à papoter. Zut alors It seemed that Joel and Florent were a perfect match, until Florent said, un caca nerveux, an expression used by French people when talking about something that annoys them. But faire un caca nerveux literally translates to doing a nervous poop. So Joel thinks Florent actually accused him of doing a nervous poop. Let's see how the situation unfolds. Je ne fais absolument pas de caca nerveux quand je suis avec quelqu'un et il commence à papoter. Oh, t'inquiète, t'es pas honte. Même moi, je fais un caca nerveux quand tout le fond. Un jour, je suis sorti avec quelqu'un, il, il a papoté et j'ai tout de suite fait un caca nerveux devant lui. Tu sais, il n'a même pas offert à payer l'addition après. T'imagines le caca nerveux que j'ai fait à ce moment oh, C'était une sale soirée. C'est dégueulasse. Oh, je sais. Mes potes me disent que... Je devrais pas faire de caca nerveux à chaque fois qu'il euh, commence à papoter. J'en fais un même quand il y a un bébé qui pleure ou dans les embouteillages. Avant là, il fallait que, que j'aille aux toilettes pour prendre un peu d'air, mais euh, maintenant j'ai appris à respirer avec. C'est fini. C'est Timon. Je suis totalement dégoûté. La soirée est terminée. J'ai rencontré plus personne de la vie. J'aimerais ce. What I just showed you in mime language is that it is so sad when a love connection goes wrong. Let's give Joel a chance to redo the situation, knowing what faire un caca nerveux means. Marguerite m'a beaucoup parlé de toi. C'est vrai. Oui, je sais que t'as étudié les maths, t'aimes les chiens, et que tu fais un caca nerveux à chaque fois que tu sors avec quelqu'un et commence à papoter. C'est désastre. Rien ne me fait faire un caca nerveux plus que le papetage. Quand je sois avec quelqu'un, je préfère approfondir la connexion. Pas vraiment apprendre à le connaître. Je suis entièrement d'accord avec toi. Je t'aime bien. Et je t'aime, mon cher Florent. Je t'aimerai pour toujours jusqu'à 5 ans. Et on se fait des caca nerveux. And now, Yelling Man. Welcome to Yelling Man. Today, I'm yelling about our dying internet. The internet sucks now. The entire thing has been sucked up by social media. What was once a fun, creative place is now a stress pit of anxiety snakes tearing at our eyes. Many of you are looking at your phone right now, aren't you? On Facebook, Insta, and Snap. This isn't the internet. These are dopamine delivery platforms we're all addicted to, controlled by people making money by using our own brain juices against us. We must resist the fentanyl of social media and go back to the calming heroin of television. Keep watching for more yelling, man, on Funny or Die TV! Namaste. That's Hindi for hello. I am not relaxed right now. All I feel is pain and suffering throughout my entire body. My name is Miscommunication, and if you're watching this, it means you're as passionate about language as I am about pretending to meditate. Today's lesson will demonstrate the perils of misusing a word when trying to woo the love of your life. Let's travel to India. This is Jack. His online screen name is Titanic Jack. He was in a chat room for lonely singles who loved the movie Titanic, where he met Priya. Her online screen name is Priya Loves Titanic. Jack has not had a premika in many years because he's a bekar, 
who sits in front of his computer all day. That's until he met Priya and decided to travel to see her in New Delhi. Let's see how their first date is going. So when we met online, I thought, I'm from Indiana. She's from India. We're meant to be together. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was with my Saheli last night and I said to them, this Jack, I think he might be my soulmate. Saheli? It means close friend. Juta! You might be wondering why Priya reacted so poorly to Jack saying Jutta. Jack wanted to impress Priya, so he learned a few words in Hindi. One of those words is Jutta, which means shoe. Jack was simply warning Priya that she was about to step on poop. What he doesn't know is that Jutta also means liar. Let's see how this works out for Jack. What are you saying? Why are you insulting me right now? Uh, you tutti. You tutti. First you call me Juta, and then you call me Tutti. I thought you were a gentleman, like Leonardo DiCaprio in Titanic. You're more like Billy Zane, the bad man. Don't touch me. And now my Juta is Tutti. What did I do? That went downhill fast. Too fast for Jack to even understand why. Jack tried to embrace Priya in public, breaking the societal code in India that frowns upon public displays of affection. So not only has Jack called his girlfriend a liar and poop, but he has also disrespected her culture in one of the most revered places in India. Poor Jack. Let's give him a chance to fix this, knowing the correct terms and customs of his country. Yes, I was with my Saheli last night. And I said to them, this Jack, I think he might be my soulmate. Saheli means close friends in Hindi. I'll learn so I can impress you. Ruko, Sabarhan! Ab Juta Rakni Arai Dutiman. And when I say Juta, I'm referring to your shoe. I'm not calling you a liar. If this were a Hollywood film, it would be the perfect time to lean in and give you a passionate kiss. But I'll hold back, because I know PDA is frowned upon in India. I love you. Jack, I'll never let go. I'll never let go. Adjusting a few words and understanding the customs of a culture led to a beautiful ending. Now let's celebrate their love with a Bollywood dance. And now, Yelling Man. Welcome to Yelling Man. Today, I'm yelling about being chiller. We're all freaked out right now because some <laughs> have forgotten to chill out. So instead, they're freaking out about needing to feel more secure. That's Spanish for good morning to everyone except my ex, Jose. You cheating, lying sack of basura. I hope a burro kicks you in the face. My name is Miscommunication, and if you're watching this, it means you're as passionate about language as I am about maintaining healthy relationships with my exes. Today's lesson will demonstrate how one word can ruin your chances with the woman of your dreams. Let's travel to Mexico. Meet Gabriela. 
She's from Argentina, but has just moved to Mexico City because she landed a starring role in a telenovela called La Empanada de Diamantes. Gabriela is on a date with Pedro, a taxi driver who gave her a ride to set one day and asked her out on a date. Pedro cannot believe a famous actress gave him, a regular guy, the time of day, and he's very nervous about this date. No puedo creer que una actriz famosa quiera salir con un tipo regular como yo. No sos un tipo regular, Pedro. Sos un bombón. Ya va a empezar la película. Ah, voy por unas palomitas. ¿Unas qué? You may be wondering why Gabriela reacted so strangely when Pedro said he was going to grab some Palomitas. You see, in Mexico, people refer to popcorn as palomitas. But palomitas literally translates to many pigeons. Now Gabriela thinks Pedro is a weirdo for wanting to bring many pigeons into the movie theater. Let's see how the situation unfolds. Palomitas. A, a mí me encanta las palomitas cuando estoy en el cine. <laughs> Un día voy a ver una película de terror. Y me asusté tanto <laughs> que las palomitas fueron volando por todos lados. Ay, no, yo odio las palomitas. Solamente como palomitas cuando voy al cine. Qué asco. Pero, ¿qué? ¿Te molesta cómo huelen las palomitas? ¿O, o el ruido crujiente que hacen entre los dientes cuando uno los anda masticando? Ay, no puedo creer que masticás palomitas, Pedro. No, sos un tipo regular. ¡Sos un monstruo! ¡No! ¡No! ¿Por qué? Pobrecito. Pedro was only trying to get some popcorn. Now his famous date thinks he's loco. Let's give Pedro a chance to redo the situation, knowing what palomitas means to Gabriela. Voy por unas palomitas. Y cuando digo palomitas, me refiero al maíz inflado y no a esos pájaros asquerosos. Ah, menos mal, Pedro. Y si miro una palomita, la mataré para que no te moleste. Ay, Pedro. No hay nada más romántico que un hombre se ofrezca a matar un pájaro en mi honor. Haría cualquier cosa para ti, mi bella. Ay, Pedro. ¿Te quieres casar conmigo? Sí, pero primero voy por unas palomitas. <laughs> There's nothing more beautiful than a wedding. I'll be at the church sitting front row with my palomitas. <laughs>